So what we're trying to do is trying to break the water molecule apart. Um, water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. And if we use this hydrogen as an energy source, we can burn this to get the energy that we want. Renewable hydrogen energy for a sustainable future. Continue watching to find out more. Malo te kataki means hello in Walisian, a member of the Polynesian language family. I'm Mikkel. The warm people of the Wallis and Futuna Islands, thank you for the care you give to all living beings and for going vegan to save the planet. May you be blessed by the Most High. Welcome to today's program, Renewable Hydrogen Energy for a Sustainable Future on Golden Age Technology. Burning fossil fuels to produce energy is clearly unsustainable and is one of the main causes of the global climate crisis. Our world needs a revolutionary solution to replace this primitive source of energy that continues to leave a massive carbon footprint on the planet. What is carbon footprint? Most energy produced in the world is produced by burning fossil fuels such as coal, oil and natural gas. You need petrol to drive your car and gas to cook food on your stove. Your carbon footprint is a measure of the total amount of greenhouse gases you release into the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels, and also what's released by other people or businesses to produce the food you eat and the things you buy. The most effective way for the average person to reduce their carbon footprint is to go vegan. It also helps to reduce air travel and to drive less or drive a more energy efficient car. According to the United States Environmental Protection Agency, or US EPA, global carbon emissions from fossil fuels have increased by about 90% since 1970. For decades, scientists and engineers have been searching for ways to reduce carbon emissions by replacing fossil fuels with cleaner forms of energy. Hydrogen is emerging as one of the key players in the renewable energy industry. Since 1958, the US National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, has used hydrogen energy and fuel cell technologies to launch spaceships. Hydrogen energy is also used for transportation, heating and power generation. Many of us have seen or at least heard of fuel cell cars and hydrogen fuel stations, but we may not understand the science of hydrogen fuel cell technologies. On today's program, we'll explore zero carbon hydrogen energy, how it works, and the technologies used to produce it. So what exactly is hydrogen energy? Hydrogen energy is the process of using hydrogen, a clean fuel, to generate electrical power. It's called a clean fuel because if the energy used to produce that hydrogen is from renewable sources, such as wind or solar power, then using that hydrogen doesn't directly contribute to climate change or increase our carbon footprint. What are fuel cells? In short, fuel cells use chemical reactions to convert chemical energy into electricity. Now let's talk about how fuel cells work. First, the fuel enters the cell. In this case, our fuel is hydrogen gas. The hydrogen gas travels to the first electrode, 
which are typically metals that conduct electricity. At this electrode, a chemical reaction occurs. The hydrogen gas molecules are split into protons, which are positively charged, and electrons, which are negatively charged. The electrons travel out of the fuel cell to create the electric current, while protons travel across the fuel cell to the second electrode. The substance that transports the protons from one electrode to the other is called the electrolyte. Once the protons travel to the second electrode, another chemical reaction occurs. At this electrode, oxygen gas in the air that enter the fuel cell on the other side reacts with the protons and electrons to produce water. The water produced from the chemical reaction then leaves the fuel cell. And that sums up how fuel cells work. Hydrogen gas enters the fuel cell, reacts to produce electrons for electricity, and reacts again with oxygen to produce water as an output. Hydrogen is also derived from a process called electrolysis that splits water into hydrogen and oxygen using an electrical current. Let's see how it works. Electrolysis is one way to produce hydrogen today. When using renewable energy sources, it's among the most eco-friendly ways to produce it. The reaction is quite simple. Two containers are put together and separated by a membrane. They are filled with water. An anode is plugged in one container and a cathode in the other. A renewable source, wind turbines, or solar panels provides electricity. The electricity then splits the water molecule or H2O into hydrogen, or H2, and oxygen, or O2. Water is oxidized from the anode, liberating oxygen, or O2 gas, and hydrogen ions, or H+, and electrons. Hydrogen ions, or H+, are then conducted through the cathodic recipient. These ions combine with the electricity's electrons at the cathode to form hydrogen, the hydrogen produced using this method is entirely carbon-free as the only byproduct is pure oxygen, so it's called green hydrogen. Electrolysis technology has been adopted by many companies around the world. According to the European Commission, the European Clean Hydrogen Alliance is aiming at an ambitious deployment of green hydrogen technologies in Europe by 2030, bringing together renewable and low-carbon hydrogen production and demand in industry, mobility and other sectors, along with hydrogen transmission and distribution. In addition, seven of the world's green hydrogen leaders, ACWA Power, CWP Renewables, Envision, Iberdrola, Osted, SNAM, and Yara announced a global coalition that will accelerate the scale and production of green hydrogen 50-fold in the next six years, helping to transform the world's most carbon-intensive industries, including power generation, chemical manufacturing, steel making, and shipping. A Japanese consortium has launched a renewable energy-powered 10 megawatt class hydrogen production unit, the Fukushima Hydrogen Energy Research Field. Fukushima is one of the world's largest hydrogen facilities and produces green hydrogen using solar power. Early this year, the German company Hydrogenius began building the world's largest plant for storing green hydrogen in industrial-scale liquid organic hydrogen carriers. The infrastructure, with an electrolysis capacity of around 1.5 gigawatts and over 80,000 tons of green hydrogen per year, is to be produced from around 2 gigawatts of renewable energy. Hydrogen can be produced from the sun's energy. There are currently two methods used for this. In the first, solar energy is converted into electricity using a photovoltaic cell 
and then hydrogen is generated through the electrolysis of water, as explained already. A team from Australian National University, or ANU, has successfully developed a way to split water to create energy using this technology. So what we're trying to do is trying to break the water molecule apart. Our water is made of hydrogen and oxygen, and we use this hydrogen as an energy source. We can burn this to get the energy that we want. In this case, instead, we'll be generating hydrogen using a clean energy, the sun, so it's quite sustainable. And then also, when hydrogen then combusts again with oxygen, it will form water as its byproduct, which is very environmentally friendly. In an alternative method, photoelectrochemical cells are used to directly produce hydrogen. Let's hear a graduate student from the Stanford University explain how this process works. These are photoelectrochemical cells, or PECs, and the way they work is they absorb sunlight in the semiconductor and they generate an electron in a hole. The hole goes through the material to the solution, where it oxidizes water to create oxygen gas. The electron goes through an external circuit into the metal cathode and then to the solution, where it reduces the proton to form hydrogen gas. Next, we'll view a new technology for producing hydrogen developed by U.S. Army Research Laboratory engineers. Army scientists and engineers recently made a discovery. An aluminum nanomaterial of their design produces high amounts of energy when it comes in contact with water or any liquid containing water. During routine materials experimentation at the U.S. Army Research Laboratory at Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland, a team of researchers observed a bubbling reaction when adding water to a material they produced. We all, as a team, we were very excited, ecstatic, that something good has come out. We knew that. The team further investigated and found that water, two molecules of hydrogen and one of oxygen, splits apart when coming into contact with their unique aluminum nanomaterial. That hydrogen that's given off can be used uh, for a fuel in combination with a fuel cell. Besides all these methods, hydrogen can also be produced by biological water splitting and by burning sustainably produced fuels, including alcohol from fermenting food or food wastes and biomass such as wood chips. It can also be produced using wind energy. A California-based company, Hyperion, has unveiled a hydrogen-powered supercar, Hyperion XP1, that's able to be driven for up to 1,000 miles on one tank of compressed hydrogen gas. The Arizona-based automaker Nikola also released a plan to begin production of a hydrogen fuel cell semi-truck and long-hauling truck version for longer trips that can cover 500 to 900 miles between fill-ups. Thank you researchers, scientists and engineers for working diligently to develop green hydrogen energy technology. Our beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai recommends people to go vegan first so that we have enough time to develop green hydrogen and other sustainable forms of energy that can replace fossil fuels. According to all the scientists reports, the livestock industry, meaning the animal rising, has produced at least 51% of all the greenhouse gases emission. That is four times the total of all transportation in the world combined, including planes, trains, cars, ships, etc. And this livestock industry is the number one human-generated source of the dangerous potent greenhouse gas that heats up our planet, which is called methane. So if we want to cool the planet quick, we have to eliminate methane. And that means eliminate livestock industry because that's the cause of methane. And it's also the biggest pollution of water, the primary destroyer of wildlife species, a major cause of deforestation and wasted water and grains, and the worst killer of our health. All information concerning the scientific evidence of climate change and its solution is in Supreme Master Ching Hai's book, From Crisis to Peace. 
free for download at crisistopeace.org. Cheerful viewers, thank you for your company today during our program, Renewable Hydrogen Energy for a Sustainable Future. May heaven bless you and your loved ones. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash G-A-T. Be vegan, repentant, save your soul.